What's good? What it is, my eight, and welcome back or welcome to my place for the boys and the girls and the he's and the she's and the them and the days and the gays and the haze. Like what? Ooh, I eat that. Um, but no, seriously, if you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for clicking on my video. Thank you for watching my content. If you like me before this video, subscribe. If you like me after this video, subscribe. Either way, if this video is helpful, drop a comment or a like. That would be very appreciated. Either either one of those three actions will mean the world to me. If you are not new here and you're just returning, give me a hug. Give me a hug. Thank you so much for supporting me. It is greatly appreciated. Um, without further ado, we are going to jump into the video. As you can read by the title, 15 things I wish I knew before attending an HBCU. If you don't know, HBCU stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. The advice in this video really goes to all colleges, just college in general, honestly, but in particularly um, HBCUs. So first things on my list is people change. People change like, like this. People change in college. And that's simply because college is a growing experience. And nobody should be held to an old version of themselves because you face so many trials and tribulations throughout college. I couldn't even, I couldn't make up half the stuff that I've been through in college, but it has made me who I am today. And I'm really, I'm really, really, really grateful for that. Like, ugh. And I lost so many people along the way. However, it wasn't a loss, honestly. It was like it was a stepping stone, if anything, because I needed to lose those people to grow. And whatever they whatever I had or whatever adventures or lessons that I received from those people it help me grow and change to the person that I wanted. Anywho, anywho, I'm getting off track. I say all that to say, just don't hold nobody to old versions of themselves. If somebody you see freshman year is not going to class, being irresponsible, smoking all the time, drinking all the time, partying, party animal, and then they come back sophomore year and they're like sophisticated. They have on a suit, they have on a tie, they don't want to party, they prefer to do work, and they just change in their ways. Allow them to do that. Be open arms and give them that love and acceptance because people desperately need that when they get to college because you can come to college and be whoever you want and whatever you want and people will believe it because we don't know you we don't know anything about you we don't know your past we, we, we don't know with that being said whatever you bring to us is you and it's people out here who don't really like that and call it quote-unquote fake when our reality is growth so yeah also I do truly apologize for this shitty ass lightning I'm working with the natural light right now and it is terrible um next thing on my list build relationships with the staff and faculty of your institution because those connections will be the ones that save you in the long run and when you are dying and you just want something to eat or you just need some help with some work or you just need a ride or some money those people are going to be there um it's it's in other words you're just building your network more like don't as and what i mean talking to people and building relationships talk to the janitor Talk to the random people because those are the people who will be the most connected. Like, people wouldn't expect these people to know so much or know as many people as they do simply because of the title that they hold at the institution. And it's, that's not the case at all. A title isn't really nothing. Like, it's your network. Your network is your network. And if you're watching my channel nine times this, you know that. And if you don't, you know now. So, here you go. I'm dropping nuggets on you. Free nuggets on you. You better catch them. Girl, dip them in some sauce and eat it up. All right, let me stop playing around. But um, yeah, please, 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 please build those relationships and just speak and ask how somebody's day is going. It, you, it can go a long way. It can go very, very far throughout college. Um, number three, procrastination will be the death of you. There's not much to say about that. Uh, yes, it's cute and fun in high school, but in college, it is not cute. I learned freshman year, I had a hard, hard lesson about that procrastination stuff, and I sent my mental health down the drain. And I went from a 10 to a negative 10 in mental health, and I never want to be there again. So. Just avoid those hassles and avoid those having to make up the excuses and avoiding the anxiety that you create within yourself and just and take responsibility and accountability and do your assignments and do what you gotta do and get it on time on a timely manner. Um, my advice to beating procrastination is literally doing the assignment or splitting the assignment up so the day you get the assignment you at least skim through the whole assignment or start part of the assignment. That way by the time it's due, if you wait until the night before it's due, you only got half of it to do and that way it's procrastination, but not full procrastination, if that makes sense. Oh, judge your mama, don't judge me. Um, my fourth tip, do not lie to yourself. Um, it can, It's very easy to happen in college. Like, you would just be living your best life, going to these parties, feeling good with your friends. And the whole time you fell in classes, your bank account and the negative bills are due. You need to talk to people. You need to, you need to do a whole bunch of stuff that you're not doing because you're lying to yourself and telling people and telling yourself that you got it together. Um, please be very, very self-aware of your mental and physical health. Like, try to be as aware as possible because 
you're growing. It, once again, you just like growing and changing the college. Like people don't understand how many changes you go through throughout college. Like I, it's crazy. I've been through like 20 stages so far and I got oh, one more year. I got a year and a semester to go. Number five, do not let Greek life control your experience. Um, to reiterate that, don't. Greek life is fun. Yes, Greek life is an amazing opportunity, amazing to be a part of. However, it is not the end of the world and it's not who you are as a person and what you have to offer. A lot of people, some people can come into college molding themselves and just suppressing themselves so much just to get into these organizations and not even guaranteed a spot. It is heartbreaking to see people go into the deepest depression because they can't get into these organizations or simply because they just can't be themselves to get into the organization. You get what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't do that. Please, 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 please. Do not let Greek life ruin your experience. Don't let that, not that, don't let it ruin it, but don't let Greek life alter your experience or make it watered down because you were so suppressed and so, so, um, so uptight because you're trying to get that approval, you know? Always keep up with your image, always look good, and just make sure you're overall around a good person, but also stay true to yourself because once again, you can't get in organizations if you're not yourself. It don't work. Number six, um, don't focus on your love life, focus on living your life. You know, um, don't let that go above your head, but in other words, baby, come to college to live your life and find out who you are. Don't come to college trying to find the love of your life. Like, you got all the years of your life to find somebody to love and be married with and have that commitment to. Right now, you need to have the commitment to yourself and to your studies, you know? You shouldn't be booed up across camp all day, all night with your boyfriend, girlfriend. Like, that's not it. Go hang out with your friends. Go go walk around the campus. Go go have some fun. Like, y'all shouldn't be trying to be married freshman year. Like, that don't make sense. And you'll be surprised how many people do this. Like, they come to college and they miss their whole first freshman year because they was in a relationship with somebody they swear they were going to marry and were in love with. That's fresh, freshman year they marry, girl. They're going to be together for life. Sophomore year come around and they broke up and... Oh, I missed that party. I'm so mad. I missed all this stuff for him. And it's like, what? <laughs> Why would you do that in the first place? You know, but that's, maybe it's just me. Also, I also do not recommend coming to college with a spouse. If you have that spouse, cut it off. Cut it off. Just allow yourself to breathe and not have that pressure because so much stuff happened in college. And if your partner not right there next to you, loyalty is a thing. Yes, loyalty is a big thing. But I'm saying four years away from each other. Only time y'all seeing each other when y'all go on break. Now I'm not saying it can't work, but it's gonna be hard to work. Unless y'all go to the same school. But I don't, it's just me. This is just my opinion, girl. Don't go into college with no boyfriend. Um, number seven, time is, time is an illusion and get your degree on your own pace. Like, it could take anywhere from 10 years to 30 years to get your degree. It don't matter, as long as you got it. There's so many people out here who stop college and then start talking about people who are in college. Like, they wasting their time. And all that time you spend in talking about, you didn't go to college or why you didn't finish, they're finishing their degree and they got the degree. And you could have had the degree too if you would have just kept going, you know? And you wouldn't have just keep thinking about the time. So don't let don't let that fool with you. If you miss some credits and you're gonna graduate late, that's fine. You're still graduating. Degrees don't have expression dates on them. They work forever. They can graduate before you or after you. Y'all still got the same degree, same benefit, same accreditation. Number eight. Present yourself correctly the first time. Um, first impressions are literally everything, especially at HBCU, because it's like, it's really who you are at the end of the day. Like, after that person meets you the first time, that is how they're gonna explain you to the next person that wants to meet you. Like, oh, um, you don't know Kari? Oh my God, that's Kari with the comfort hair. Funny Kari, he do YouTube videos and it's like you never see him. Like, the little things you do, like cussing, or you're too obnoxious, or anything. It's like anything. Just try your best to present yourself in the most professional way and best way possible. Keep a clean image, some positive energy around you, and you should be good for the most part. Um, number nine, be your own advisor. And I mean that in all caps, be your own advisor. Because in college, yes, there are people in positions who get paid to look over your stuff and do their job and register you for classes and check over your financial aid. However, it's their degree, not yours. In the infamous words of my um, high school teacher, I got my degree, you trying to get yours. You know, so that is a real thing. You should care more about your degree than anybody on this campus. You should be checking your financial aid like clockwork. Checking your classes like clockwork. Making sure all your courses and course requirements are met. Like, if you come into Benedict, I'm gonna tell you this now. Make your own schedule. No advisor should be making a schedule for you. And if they do, you, you all both need to sit down and revise. And you need to critique it just as much as they critique it. Don't accept no any old schedule because they will throw you in any classes that they can that don't even count towards your major. And then later on down the line, when it's time to graduate, because I have a friend that's going through this right now. When it's time to graduate, 
you look up and they telling you, oh, well, you, you're missing 33 credits. And I'm sorry, yes, you took those classes that we gave to you, that we told you you needed, but here it says you don't need them. So we're sorry, but you're gonna have to take some more and pay for some more classes in order to graduate or you just not graduate. And yes, I know that sounds like BS, but at the end of the day, it's your career just as much as it's theirs. So you gotta care, so be your own advisor. Number 10 is come to school and be who you are. Be whatever you want. Like, you can come to school. Like, I, where I'm from, back home, I was probably, I was very obnoxious. I barely put it on clothes every day. I would put on slides, shorts, and be there every day. Do rag it out. And I would think that's fine because it was acceptable in my environment. But once I changed my environment and my people that I was around, I started to see just how bangy I was looking like that was not the way to go. And they don't know me. I realized in my mind, like, these people don't know. If I decide to get a tongue ring and say I'm from Australia, how would they know? All of that to say, treat yourself how you want to be treated. View yourself how you want to be viewed. Create that image for yourself. It's not, it's, not, it's not much to it. It may seem hard, but it's not. Whatever you picture yourself as in your head, you see that man with that suit or that woman with that dress, that briefcase, them heels. Girl, get up, make it happen. Put it on, take a picture. Number 11. This is very, 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 very important. You make the experience, not your school. I'm gonna say it again, you. You make the experience, not the school. And that, I mean that in the most purest form possible. Don't think this school is just about to hand you a handful of memories. You have to create them. Go out to your dorm. Walk up to random people, joke with them, go to the cab, ask somebody can you sit next to them. In the library, ask somebody for help, start a conversation. Get to know people around your campus, learn your people, learn. This is a campus for you, this place is for you. Don't waste your time here by being to yourself and acting like nobody is here for you or want to accept you because nine times out of ten, there's somebody on this campus that's just like you or is going to feel just like you. And right there, that's a friendship and y'all relate. So don't play yourself and be one of them kids though. My school was lame, it was not on that. The No. You was not all that. You were lame. I'm having the time of my life where I'm at and what I'm doing. Number 12, join something. Join a club, join an organization, join something. It's for, I don't, it don't matter. Join something. That goes into that experience. In order to get in that experience, you want to be a part of things. Be a part of things bigger than you. Like You want to be able to wake up one day and say, I'm not feeling too well. I need to I need to go hang it with some people. Kick it with some people that I trust. You get up, text your group, your group me, your organization like, What's up, peoples? I need somebody to talk to. Somebody on the spot, on call. Cause somebody brought me to the grocery store on the spot, on the call. And these are people that are for you and don't judge you because if you're in this organization or a club, you knew it was for you when you joined it. So, you know, join something. You know, don't be the one of the people who didn't join nothing all four years and just later on, they don't have no alumni to call on. They don't have nobody to call on when they get back to the school. Like, I promise you, you're gonna have those connections when it comes down to homecoming or the alumni um, events, anything of that nature. Just coming back to the school, your stomach grounds, you wanna have them orgs and stuff behind you because when you step in that room or wherever you step, wherever you did for that organization or those clubs, it's gonna come back and people gonna know your name. People gonna know the work that you did. So when you step in a room, you're gonna be respected. You're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna be given credit. You're gonna be value in that space. And that is what I really, really, really appreciate about HBCUs. They give you your credit and they treat you like the person you deserve to be treated. Me with my TikTok and my YouTube, people walk up to me, Kari, you is famous. Oh my God, hey Kari, you so busy, you always doing your content, you own it, yes, um, you inspire me. Like, I'm, like, this is how people are treating me every day on campus. They treat me like what I'm planning to be out. They are gonna treat you how you present yourself. All right, and then for number 13 is think before you react. Um, that is like my biggest thing. Please think before you react because Anything that happens on campus stays on campus. It does not go nowhere. You fight with your boyfriend in front of the cab. Y'all arguing real loud in the middle of the street for no reason. Everybody hear it. Because once it's on campus, that's campus business. And I mean, it's going to go from students to staff this quick. Y'all, you think faculty don't know the real tea about what you did in the basement stairs? Girl, bye. They be knowing the tea down caboodles. They just they can't speak on it because it's against their contract. However, it gets around. It's campus business now. Once again, before you react, think. Just take that moment because that one split second decision can alter your path forever. Like, it's so easy to get kicked out of college. Like, you can't get expelled from college. It's so easy. And once you get taken away, you just start to think like, wow, I wish I would have, I wish I would have sat down and think. And you don't want to be one of them people I wish or I regret. And number 14, have fun, loosen up. Yes, college is a serious thing. Life is serious. You gotta get that internship. You gotta get that 4.0. You gotta get them papers in. Yes, we all have to do that but also have fun in the midst of all of this. You're gonna stress all your life. You, you're gonna have things to do all your life. Don't spend so much energy and time on your undergrad year trying to perfect it when it's like, this is just the beginning of a life of stress. Like, 
don't do that to yourself. Don't pressure yourself so much to the point where you feel like you gotta be this perfect student because the perfect student is impossible. It's just impossible. But I mean, you can do the best that you can do. Number 15, balance is everything. Yin yang, student life, real life. Student life, work life, like y'all. I'm an RA, I'm a part of MOD, Man of Definition. I'm a um, canvas photographer, I do YouTube, I'm a content creator, I have a um, nine to five. Just those five things is enough. Okay, that's one thing. And then on this side is schoolwork, teachers, keeping up with professors, keeping up with my advisor, doing my classes, making sure my financial aid is right. All of that. And you have to balance all of that. Like, look, this is my, I don't know if I can see, but this is my to-do list. Being able to find that balance as a student is what makes the experience so significant because after four years, you look back and you think like, wow, like I've persevered through some crazy things. I've made it over obstacles that I thought I wouldn't make it over. Cause I, I, I recall freshman year, like it was, like it was yesterday and baby, some things I done did and I done came back from and just like, it shocks me to this day. Like it shocks me how many L's I done took, at least L's and I thought they were L's and later on turned out to be W's because I'm still here and I'm doing what I gotta do. As long as you don't stop and keep going and keep that fuel and remember why you in college and what you're doing there for, you should be good. Alrighty, and that is it. That is all for this video. Once again, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button and I'll upload more consistently. Um, don't forget to add my social platforms, Kari underscore famous for everything. We can talk more because I am an HBCU advocate. Uh, shout out to all my HBCU girls. Hey, how you doing? Um, yeah, that's it. That's all. And I'm going to catch you guys on the flip side. Thank you so much for watching.